All right, welcome back to Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV. Glad you could join us. We, as always, we want to talk about things that interest the public. And one of the things that always interests interest me when, it, when you're dealing with the public is people that have to deal with the public. And there's one of the jobs that I think is probably one of the most fascinating jobs there is, but probably at the same time one of the most tough jobs there is, and that's dealing with tragedy. And I know the, the gentleman I've got here with me right now, and I'm not saying tragedy follows him around, but he follows tragedy around to some degree, Reverend Carl Luss. So, uh, Carl, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kenny. Good afternoon, folks. I'm glad <laughs> to be here. <laughs> and I, you've got several roles, and we may get into all three of those roles. I know you're, you're a minister of the Episcopal Church here in Bargetown. You're the chaplain at, at the Flash A Hospital. And, but one of the roles we'll get into first is I know you, you deal with the uh, emergency services here in, in, in Nelson County. And one of the first people on the scene of some pretty tragic accidents sometimes. So could you tell us a little bit about what, what that really entails? Thank you, Kenny, for asking that question. There actually are four specially trained emergency service chaplains here in Nelson County who are part of an organization called the Nelson County Chaplains Response Team. Uh, we are here to serve uh, all of our first responder agencies and the public uh, at the request of those first responder agencies, and that of course includes law enforcement, it includes fire, it includes EMS, uh, and so uh, the four of us are available uh, to respond to certain uh, situations or at the request of one of those agencies on scene. So, so like I said, it's sometimes you get in, into situations that um, the average public I'm not saying they don't see, but they probably have a hard time to handle because you have to be able to be prepared to see things that are, um, I'm going to say, a little bloody and gory sometimes. Well, you know, tragedy uh, has no boundaries sometimes, uh, whether it's uh, uh, an unexpected uh, uh, death of uh, uh, someone at home, whether it is uh, a situation involving a motor vehicle crash, uh, whether it's... Uh, 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 hostage situation, uh, lost child, whatever it may be, uh, to somebody that's, that's a tragedy that exceeds their normal coping skills. Uh, and so that's where we come into play. We don't self-deploy. I want to make that very clear. We respond at the request of our first responder agencies. Uh, there are certain uh, automatic responses um, that uh, uh, are dispatched through our 911 dispatch center for a chaplain. But again, those are particular instances that the agency heads have said uh, when that, that happens and we're called to a particular incident, we want a chaplain responding with us. So yes, uh, we're there for folks who, who simply need a shoulder to, to, to lean on, if you will. Uh, we're non-denominational. Uh, the four of us uh, are from four different uh, uh, denominations, religious denominations, but we all have one thing in common, and that is that we have a desire to serve. Many of us, uh, three of us, have been uh, firefighters. Uh, our fourth uh, person and our chaplain coordinator uh, is Dr. Tom Mobley, who is the field uh, office chaplain for the FBI field office in Louisville. Uh, and uh, in fact, Dr. Mobley wrote the book on law enforcement chaplains. He literally wrote wrote the book. So all four of us have had experience with first responder agencies serving in that capacity. All four of us have special training in crisis chaplaincy. This is a very specialized kind of ministry. And it's, it's, it's about meeting people where they are and helping people deal with those situations in which their coping skills are, are stripped away by uh, some tragedy in their lives. Well, actually, obviously, there are very emotional issues that come up, and people are, uh, some people, ever ha and you mentioned earlier, everybody handles it a little differently. Some people turn to God, some people turn away from God. That's right. And so when you, when you show up as a minister, is it more on a um, ministerial basis? Is it on a counselor basis? or is it, you, Are you there just, what? what is the first thing you want to assess when you come on the scene of something that is what people need do they just need somebody to talk to sometime or how what, what do you do and that's and that is often simply the request for uh listening ears and broad shoulders well of course what we would do is check in first with the lead first responder agency incident commander to get a sense of what what is going on and then we'll simply uh, be available to the folks who may be on that scene 
who are having difficulty. Uh, this is not about proselytizing. This is not about pushing religion on anybody. Chaplaincy is a very specialized kind of ministry in which the chaplain is someone who meets those folks where they are. And it's not about getting them to some place we want them to be. It's about allowing them to have a safe way in which to express their emotions and to be able to help them uh, with things that, that need to be done, whether that's helping them get to uh, the emergency department of the hospital, whether that is uh, assisting uh, in making death notifications with the coroner's office, whatever that assistance may be. Uh, we have a couple models that we, that we use for uh, our scope of practice here. Mm -hmm. One of these is a model that's uh, been used in Charleston, South Carolina uh, since uh, 1992. It's called Coastal Crisis Chaplaincy. Uh, and again, uh, that agency, like our agency, are uh, chaplaincy for the first responders themselves so that they know they've, they've got that extra level of care on scene to, to look after bystanders, to look after family, to look after next to kin while they deal with the situation itself. Uh, another model has been the model that uh, Louisville Metro Police Department uh, uses in Louisville. Uh, we, had, uh, we have a similar model in, in Taylor County, Campbellsville, mm -hmm. Kentucky, a similar model in Logan County, Russellville, Kentucky, uh, in which there is a team that uh, responds at the request of uh, first responder agencies for the first responder personnel. That's, that's very important. We are chaplains to those folks when they need somebody to talk to uh, to help them deal with all of the, the tough stuff that, that they may have to encounter and to respond for uh, the public as well. So we have two distinct missions to two uh, distinct populations, uh, but the mission is the same in that we are simply listening ears uh, and folks with special training in crisis chaplaincy to help folks uh, through uh, a particular really tough crisis for whatever reason. Now, I know this is not unique to Nelson County. Is this something that uh, just about every county in the state has, or is it or is still looking for people? Many, many counties in Kentucky have an agency, a first responder agency, that may have a chaplain. But uh, not all of those folks are able to provide the level of care that we do here. Um, because uh, first of all, there may only be one person. And secondly, there is uh, a good deal of specialized training. Our folks will have over 100 hours training beyond whatever preparation they may have had uh, for uh, ministry in general. So uh, it's a very specialized thing. No, every county doesn't have this. Mm -hmm. I, I outlined uh, three or four mm -hmm. there. Uh, I wish more did. Uh, because uh, there, is, there is certainly that need, uh, particularly uh, as we have a more mobile population and we have a population with, with folks who are not necessarily affiliated with any denominational, don't have a pastoral relationship with, with uh, uh, someone in a faith-based organization. And so uh, there is certainly a perceived and an actual need there. Um, and uh, consequently, uh, it would be a good thing. Uh, we do have a, a strong presence with the International Conference of Police Chaplains in Kentucky. And in fact, uh, a local resident, Doug Alexander, is the regional director for the International Conference of Police Chaplains. Dr. Mobley is the state director for that organization. And so uh, these organizations are putting on more training. Uh, the Kentucky Federation of Fire Chaplains also provides training as well, so uh, we have opportunities to train more chaplains, certainly, uh, but it's, it's, not everybody can do this. Uh, people ask me, they say, how do you do this? And I say, you know what, I don't know. I, I simply know that I can, that, that from my faith perspective, God has given me gifts and skills, and the other, the other three of us as well, has given us gifts and skills to do things that, that most of us would just as soon not have to do, but because we can do them, we do do them to serve the public. Now, we're volunteers. Uh, we don't have a budget. Um, we, uh, we exist because our first responder agencies see a need for us. 
Uh, we can uh, obtain training at no or low cost, thankfully. Uh, so it, it really is, uh, it is a call, but it's a very specialized kind of call. It's much like, it's much like in a way a physician who, who feels called to say be a pediatric cardiologist because he, he wants or she wants to work with small children mm -hmm. who have particular problems with their heart. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's that kind of a specialized. Well, how much do you problem. find that what you do as a, as a chaplain for the emergency <coughs> services, how much you find that that also relates to your job at the Flash Air Hospital? Well, a chaplaincy uh, is chaplaincy, and then within that there, there are specializations. Uh, healthcare chaplaincy is um, is another unique, if you will, specialized form of chaplaincy. Um, again, you think about this in healthcare chaplaincy, you have folks who, who have a crisis of some kind or another, whether it's simply a, a bad case of the flu and, and they're, you know, their family's upset because they're really sick, or whether it's something very tragic like a massive heart attack or a stroke. Uh, so healthcare chaplaincy uh, is is also a specialty, and th there's some carryover there, certainly mm -hmm. in terms of dealing with crises and emotions, yeah, and emotions. So you know, um, so somebody's at the hospital and they need a chaplain. I mean, they just ask to uh, ask for the chaplain, and you show up, or is that, how's that well, work? Well, <laughs> there, there are five of us who uh -huh. are staff chaplains right. at Flagey Hospital. Um, it so happens that. Uh, that Dr. Mobley and I and uh, uh, Chaplain Eldon Morgan, all three of us uh, also uh, work part-time as hospital chaplains. Mm -hmm. uh, our hospital here has a very strong chaplaincy program and I'm thankful for that. You know, the, our, our local Flagey Hospital uh, comes out of a faith-based background. The Sisters of Charity uh, founded that hospital uh, along with many other hospitals. And so there is this sense of holistic health care body, mind, and spirit, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the care provided there. Uh, every inpatient admission at Flagey is seen by one of the chaplains within 24 to 48 hours of admission. I did not know that. Uh, absolutely. And we're simply there to, to listen to folks, to help them uh, engage the spiritual side of their life. Mm -hmm. uh, again, strictly non-denominational. Uh, and, you know, a, a chaplain can minister to somebody who has no faith belief, mm -hmm. just, as, just as we can to somebody who has a strong faith belief. Uh, so we're there and we, we will make a, that initial visit uh, with every one of those patients. Uh, if there are needs that need to be met, the need may be as simple as, would you please call my pastor and let him know I'm in the hospital? Mm -hmm. You know, now with the, with the, the privacy laws, uh, clergy can't go to the hospital and just look at the census and say, well, I'll visit this one and mm -hmm. that one and so forth. That, that's, uh, that's an invasion of privacy uh, now. Uh, but the patient can tell the chaplain, I would like to talk yeah. to my pastor or my rabbi or, or uh, perhaps they're Buddhist and they want to talk to a Buddhist monk. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever the case may be, we will work to connect them with their particular faith tradition. Uh, we will be there to, to provide support uh, again, sometimes it's simply ministry of presence, uh, which means we're presence. We don't say anything. We may not actually do something, but we represent that something bigger than ourselves, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, in whatever way people see that in their own lives. Uh, we also, of course, uh, deal with uh, emergencies in our emergency department or emergencies that may occur in the care and treatment of an inpatient. Uh, we also are available to patients at our cancer clinic there. Uh, so uh, the, the hospital chaplaincy program at Flagey is one of the strongest that I've ever been affiliated with. And I'm very thankful for that because we get letters from folks uh, that, that compliment us mm -hmm. on providing that level of care. So we're, we're our, an adjunct in a way to to direct clinical care, but we're also part of that, that clinical team in that we look at this from a whole standpoint, mm -hmm. body, mind, and spirit. So is it safe to say most chaplains are already ordained ministers before they get into the chaplain area, or are they? Many, that... many of them are. Mm -hmm. um, 
there are also folks who are lay chaplains. They're mm -hmm. commissioned. They're not ordained, but yeah. they're commissioned. But they've they've had special training. Yeah. This is uh, none of these specialized ministries are are something that that somebody can just walk in and say, I think I want to be a chaplain. Well, I was going to say, if you're going to recruit somebody, what would the recruitment process be? I mean, you, if somebody told me, listening in right now, so you know, I think I have the skills to be a chaplain and I'd like to be so, what would you recommend? I mean, is there any specialized study they should be going for? I mean, should they be going to college for something or another, or they should just be working on uh, other skills? Well, it depends upon which kind of chaplaincy. Mm -hmm. uh, the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Institutions uh, has specific requirements for chaplains in healthcare uh, that uh, require uh, a master's level uh, degree in uh, religion, theology, or, or related mm -hmm. uh, subjects, as well as then specialized additional training in what we call clinical pastoral education, which uh, it helps them gain the skills to to be a chaplain in uh, those kind of settings okay. in healthcare. Um, usually, we would be looking for somebody who had some experience uh, in working with a faith-based organization uh, before they thought about becoming a chaplain. And counseling skills. I and know you do a lot of counseling inside. outside of either both of those jobs. Well, I, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not a professional. No, counselor. I understand that. Uh, I, I do a lot of listening. We'll put like I say, if people call upon you, you don't. Know, Some, sometimes folks do, and and that's that's pastoral counseling. That's that's, and I am trained in that. Mm -hmm. And so yes, that's part of that clinical pastoral education that yeah. hospital chaplains will get on the on the side of the Nelson County Chaplain's Response Team. Uh, again, in this county, we have some specific requirements that the person be ordained or commissioned by a faith-based community, mm -hmm. uh, denomination, congregation, uh, that they have had a number, at least five years experience uh, as a first responder, mm -hmm. that they also have specialized training in either, or in their, our case, both uh, fire EMS and law enforcement chaplaincy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, uh, if, if somebody's interested and feels called to that, uh, they need to talk to one of us. Yeah. Uh, we, we, right now we don't have any yeah. openings, so to speak, uh, either at the hospital or with the chaplain's response team. Uh, but uh, it, it really comes down to some of the subjective people skills mm. that folks need to have. And, and the mindset that says, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this as, as an evangelist. Yeah. I'm doing this as, as a servant, uh, so to speak. So it's a very different, it's very different from pastoral ministry, from congregational ministry. Um, and it requires different skill sets um, as well. Mm. But it's very rewarding and, and the reward is not is not anything other than when you walk away, you know that you left somebody better than you found them. Okay, well, I guess the main thing, one of the things I want to take away is it's a whole lot more to it than what a lot of people think there is. That's right. And the second thing is, is what we want you to know is that there is somebody there. I mean, when you have a crisis, whether it's a, a mer mer medical emergency out on the road or a medical emergency at home or at the hospital, somebody's there to listen. And that's, that's basically you or one of the others. And they're not just, they're not somebody like me there to listen. They're somebody actually trained to listen and can help. So I, know, I guess the feeling a lot of people get sometimes, and I, I hear this a lot of times when I say, well, why does people get so depressed? Or why do they commit suicide or something of that nature? I think a lot of times they feel they're alone. And they just simply don't know that there's anybody there to help or there to listen. And where our message is, there is. I mean, you're, you're here. It's about hope. Uh, when folks lose hope, then they, they uh, are apt to make uh, choices that, that have some pretty severe consequences. And so part of what chaplaincy does is to simply, is simply be a beacon of hope for folks. And of course, I can't stress enough that, that we're also here for every one of our law enforcement officers, our firefighters, uh, our emergency medical personnel, uh, to help them continue to do the great job that they do. Uh, Sometimes things get so tough, and I will say this, I had 52 years in the fire service and 27 years in EMS, uh, and 
you see a lot of things and you wonder, am I really supposed to be doing this? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I just can't do this anymore. The human mind part can of, only take so much. Part of what we do as chaplains for, for our first responders is to be there to encourage them, uh, to support them, yeah. to let them know that indeed there are also folks there that can, can help them continue to do what they feel called to do uh, in, in serving our population as first responders. Well, PTSD doesn't just apply to the military. I'm That's sure right. that happens for That's a lot of people that see right. things on a daily basis that it's got to be tough. And, and, and I know it's tough for you to be there to be with them, but uh, uh, thank God you are. Well, thank you, Kenny. And we try to take good care of ourselves, you know, so that we can continue to do what we do. Uh, we Self-care is extremely important, and we try to model that as well. All right. Well, we appreciate you tuning in, and Carl, appreciate you being here with us today, Carl Lusk. And uh, again, we appreciate everybody tuning in here on Community Focus. And if you have any questions, just give us a call, and we'll uh, get you in touch with the right people if you ever really want to know how to get in touch with Carl. Like I said, I normally catch you at the Flagey Hospital or the Episcopal Church of the Ascension in downtown Bardstown. I guess one of those two places generally we're going to catch you at. <laughs> Either at or at home in New Haven. <laughs> New Haven. I, 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 want to, I do want to mention who the other three chaplains are oh, okay, on, the, sure. on the response team. Chaplain Mobley, I already spoke about him. He's our chaplain coordinator. He's actually out of town this week uh, at a training event uh, on behalf of the FBI and it will carry over as far as his chaplaincy here. Uh, Chaplain Eldon Morgan, who uh, is a retired uh, pastor, pastored here in Bardstown for a number of years, uh, had about 14 years experience on the Bardstown Nelson County Fire Department. Uh, and Chaplain Terry Troutman from Boston. Uh, Chaplain Troutman is an ordained elder in his church there in Boston, uh, and he's been a member of the Boston Fire Department uh, for probably 25 to 30 years. So. Uh, those, those are the folks, uh, myself, uh, and uh, we're just thankful to be able to serve. All right, Carl, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll be back with more Community Focus here on Central Kentucky TV. Stick around. Take care, everybody.